Uh, my name is James Griffith, and this is my father. That's John Kelly Griffith. He was in the Marines. He joined uh, in July of 1941. He said because he wanted to see China. He never got to see China. He got to see Hawaii. He got to see Guadalcanal. He got to see Saipan, but he never got to China. Um, and while he was on Saipan, or because he went to Saipan, I think it's uh, leading to why I am here. Uh, he was, as anybody would be, scared. And going into Saipan, he was baptized by a priest who gave him brief instruction. And then later on after the war was over, when he wanted to marry my mother, and they weren't going to allow it because he was a Protestant who had previously been married and divorced, he needed to find the priest who on the Neville baptized him before he went ashore. That priest confirmed, yes, I baptized him and three other fellows. I'm surprised that he made it because the other three lads, as he said, di uh, died. And he uh, wrote a letter saying, yes, I baptized him, I instructed him. He was allowed to marry my mother, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> but on Saipan, uh, he picked up this courier pouch, and I wish I could read or speak Japanese because I would then know what the insignia there means. And in the pouch was this map. And you can see, you know, Saipan would be around here. You can see what I believe is Guam, Wake, and Midway, although it'd probably be in reverse order that whoever held this map probably was on Midway, then had retreated to here, retreated to here, and of course was just being pushed further and further back towards the home islands. So you're guessing a Japanese soldier was actually marking? Well, the, you can the see retreat. that he circled the islands where I believe he was, or whoever had this map was yeah. at one time. And then wound up? And would have been back there, yeah. Or maybe that was where he began. I don't know, of course, because that young man didn't survive. This is the treasure. And as far as I know, this would be his name. You know, that is the insignia in the, in the pouch. But it could also just be some, you know, military uh, like unit number for all I know too. And uh, oh, also on Saipan, he picked up photos, and I don't know if you would like me to pull these out of the plastic so that they're easier to see. And as you can see, some of them are very militaristic, a guy posing with his sword and his uniform. But here's a young man with a wife. She's very Asian demeanor and dress, and he's wearing a fedora with Japanese, otherwise Japanese clothing. Many of them are just family pictures. Another man with a fedora and his baby. Very studious looking. And these are just like wallet photos that you might find. Or the family there in the, the corner. And then some, you know, what looked to be military issue ID cards. And these photos are from Saipan, but they are not things that he found on Saipan. The, uh, that is, these up here and the rest. These are military issue, but you can see some of the ugly things that happened on Saipan. People torched, uh, that's how they got them out of the caves, is with flamethrowers handling American casualties there. And these pictures, I, you know, again, I could not tell you exactly what they are. But it's amazing. These look great. I mean, they're in good shape. Mm -hmm. You're taking good care of them. We're thrilled that we could see them. They all have this 385 stamp on them, which I assume is something that the military stamped on them and then issued them to anybody who wanted to buy the things, I suppose, is you know, like a going away present. <laughs> or just as a sensor clearance. Yeah. These are just a couple of more photos that are a little bit larger. There's probably a wife or girlfriend. And we have no idea who any of these people are, right? In a platoon.
In some cases, not on these, in some of the other cases, there's some writing on the back. Uh, and it might be something that just says mother and father. It might be a name. It just might be a place and a date. The person figuring, I already know the, the name of whoever's in there. These are some postcards. These are from, the two black and white ones are from Japan, temples and gardens. But then these postcards, the one here, that's a picture of Guadalcanal seen from the bomber's point of view. Sort of celebrating the glory of the attack and the submission of the British from, you know, I don't know exactly where, if that's Philippines or Shanghai, but a postcard celebrating that. You really need to have these translated. These are some more martial postcards, battles at sea. But then these are sort of the other, sort of more in the stereotypical sense, perhaps, of Asian contemplation, quiet, uh, soldiers occupying some territory, but otherwise just enjoying the landscape, enjoying the scenery, the architecture, and not at all martial. And I guess what's fascinating to me is how the two kinds of pictures, postcards, show two kinds of personalities the one being the personality you'd be very afraid of, the other the personality that you wouldn't. And of course what we know from Saipan is that the Japanese were exactly the same. They were so afraid on Saipan of the Americans because they'd been told that the Americans were vicious, they'd rape the women, they'd torture the men, that as they were moving toward the end of the island, Japanese civilians and those soldiers who survived threw themselves over that cliff rather than be captured. And, uh, you know, you've seen film of that, and it's the one thing that my father can remember that, as I say, he was afraid to go ashore, but that was probably the most frightening thing he saw, was something that would do no harm to him. It was something where they're doing harm to themselves, and he was just shocked, disbelieving, and said sort of ruefully that the only thing he could do was go down and check on them, and sort of eerily, some would have watches that were still ticking and he would remember that detail, but of course they were dead. <laughs>